Good morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. We bless the Lord once again for you and your presence with us on this Sunday morning. We are always honored and privileged to be able to come into your hearts and your homes with a word from the Lord. We're grateful today on this dreary Sunday morning, but even though the clouds may be hovering over and the rain and the mists may be falling down, yet still we believe that the sun is shining deep down in our souls. So today we continue to rejoice in the God of our salvation. It is always my honor to be able to share another word from the Lord with you. And on this morning, we're going to invite your attention into the Old Testament passages of Scripture, particularly the book of Daniel, the fifth chapter, where we're going to be reading in your hearing verses 22 through 24. We wish that we could read all of the fifth chapter of Daniel, uh, but for time constraints, we're going to condense it down through to 22 through 24, but we invite you to keep your Bibles open as we will be looking at some of the other verses in this chapter. There you will find these words. As I'm reading from the New International Version of Scripture, it says, But you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, although you knew all this, and you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. They have brought the vessels of his house before you, and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And the God who holds your breath in his hand and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. Then the fingers of the hand were sent from him, and this writing was written. Bless the Lord for the reading of his most holy word. Let us pray. Eternal and all wise God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for the honor and the privilege you extend to us to be able to hear a word from you. We ask and invite you, O oh God, to come into our lives, into our hearts, into our homes, into our very space, that where we are right now is our sanctuary, and it is sanctified for your presence. So Lord, we invite you through your spirit to be with us in this moment as you share your word with us, that your word might continue to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathways. Oh God, I pray now that you would be with us all. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we do ask and pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, on this morning, I want to speak to you from the thought, the battle for the soul of our nation. This is the Memorial Day weekend. It's a time when we pause to pay tribute to all of those who have made the ultimate sacrifice by the laying down of their lives for our freedom and our way of life. And so certainly we continue to honor them for the gift that they have given us that we might be able to live as we do in this day and at this time. But as we get into our scripture today, when Joe Biden entered the race for president, a comment he made was that he was running because he recognized that there was a battle for the soul 
of our nation. What he saw was nothing new. But the way he politicized it causes you to stop and take notice. The biggest battle we as Americans are facing today is the battle for the soul of our nation. We see it around us every day. There is the erosion of our society. And this didn't begin with Trump. He just added more fuel to an already consuming fire. And we've seen it rapidly accelerate. But I am convinced it really doesn't matter whether there's a Democrat or a Republican in the Oval Office. This nation that we've all come to love continues to erode. And the position we're in today is because of what we tolerated yesterday. And therefore, the position we'll be in tomorrow will be, be because of what we tolerate today. Now, Daniel saw a lot of what we're seeing today. Yet his situation was much worse. As we look at this fifth chapter, we find that he describes the collapse of a nation. A nation that became so comfortable and secure within the confines of their strong walls, but they were eroding from within. And so as I see it, I would say Babylon made four major mistakes. One, they lost all sense of remembrance. Two, they lost all sense of reality. Three, they lost all sense of restraint. And then the fourth mistake, they lost all sense of respect. And some of these same mistakes are being made today in our own nation. When we look at the text today, Belshazzar's problem was that he had forgotten some of the valuable lessons from the past. Lessons King Nebuchadnezzar had learned the hard way. Lessons like those who walk in pride. God is able to put down. Daniel offers us some important insight when he challenges Belshazzar with the accusation saying that you have lifted yourself up against the Lord of heaven. And that's exactly what the king was doing. <clears throat> he was going around boasting about himself. And he picked right up where King Nebuchadnezzar had left off, saying, is not this Great Babylon, that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. Pride always leads to a fall. As a matter of fact, it's at the top of the list of those things that God despises. 
And yes, those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. You know, America used to honor God unashamedly and openly. It was etched in the numerous monuments that are scattered throughout the regions in which we live. It's carved and granite on many of the government buildings in our federal triangle. It's printed on our currency and even written within our founding documents. Honor given unto our God. There was a time when we credited God with our blessings and our successes. And then we were turned to him in our trials and our losses. But today, my brothers and sisters, like Babylon, we too seem to have lost a sense of of remembrance. In many ways, we've forgotten our past. What was it about America that, that made us so great and caused so many from nations all around the world to risk their lives and fortunes to come here. Is there something about America that distinguishes us from our neighbors to the north and to the south? Canada was settled by the French who were looking for gold. Mexico was settled by the Spanish who were also looking for gold. But America was settled by those who came here primarily looking for God. They came searching for a home where God could be exalted and worshiped in spirit, freedom, and truth. But my brothers and sisters, we've fallen a long way from where we once were. Today, it's not uncommon to see the federal courts repeatedly restricting nativity scenes from public property or removing the Ten Commandment displays from government buildings. Unfortunately, there are sobering similarities between ancient Babylon and modern America. And like Babylon, there's an expensive price to pay when a nation loses all of its sense of remembrance of who they are and where they come from. But not only have they lost a sense of remembrance, in order to understand how Belshazzar lost all of his reality around him, we need to remember in the text, outside the walls of Babylon, were camped the Medes and the Persians 
surrounding the city, but on the inside of Babylon, Belshazzar was partying like his 1999. The Babylonians thought because of their history of dominance and the strong walls they had built around their city, that they were invincible and indestructible. But everywhere you looked beyond them, you could see the enemy surrounding the city. They thought the walls were so high and thick that they were impossible to penetrate. And they had a 20 year supply of rations stored up on the inside. But Belshazzar lost all sense of reality. And when we began to feel so secure in our own strength, Danger is just on the other side of the wall. People today think because that they've gotten away with something before that they'll get away with it again. Like the king who was so blind and drunk on his own success to realize that the strength of a kingdom is never on the outside, but on the inside. Babylon fell because they had become corrupt on the inside with no sense of remembrance or sense a reality. <clears throat> and some people today foolishly think that God needs America to carry out his plan on the earth. After all, we've won all of the world wars. The Cold War is over. And we are known as the only real superpower still standing in the world today. But I believe God is saying to us today, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he also falls. America and Americans have been duped to think that we're invincible but remember, there was a time when Israel was the world's only superpower. And they too were one nation under God. And their motto was, in God, we trust. But 3,000 years later, God gave birth to another nation, America. Built, on, built and based on Israel's ancient commandments. So why should we think that we are invincible? It is time for us to remember who we are and where we come from. It's time for us to look at the reality of what's going on around us today and truly began to pray, asking the Lord's forgiveness. But that third, third answer was there was the danger of losing a sense of restraint. When a nation or an individual loses all sense of remembrance and reality, they also lose all sense of restraint. The Babylonians were too blind 
to see any connection between their moral decay and national decline. Go back and look in the beginning of the fifth chapter. <clears throat> Around verse 2 describes, Daniel describes what the Old Testament politely calls concubines. These were women who were kept for the king's pleasure for the purpose of sexual gratification and additional procreation. And our nation, like Babylon, has been virtually given over to permissiveness and perversions of all types. And there's not enough time this morning to even begin to list and address all the various forms of perversions that have saturated our culture through the movies, television, media, and the internet. Men have stopped leading their families in spiritual and moral development. Much like the Babylonians, we've lost all sense of restraint. And it has impacted our families, our communities, and our nation. But along with losing our sense of restraint, there is also the loss of all sense of respect. I don't know about anybody else, but it just seems to me that nothing is sacred anymore. There were no more restraint. And now there's a loss of respect. A loss of respect for anything that is sacred. Not even the human life is viewed as being sacred. But as it did in Daniel's day, then something happened. The fingers of a man's hand appeared and wrote on the plaster of the wall. And when the king saw it, the king immediately sobered up. The Bible says that his knees knocked against each other. And into the party hall comes Brother Daniel. As it was then, so is it is now. Most people don't want the man or the woman of God around when the liquor is flowing and the promiscuity is present. But when the writing is on the wall, when the crisis comes, they no longer want their immoral friends or their drinking buddies. But they began to look for someone who can tell them what the writing means. And so as Daniel enters the party hall, <coughs> he looks around. Silence filled the hallway. The sacred vessels were scattered around the tables. And then he did what every preacher should do. He revealed God's word without fear or without favor. But before he interpreted the writing, he preached a sermon to them with three points. And the first he said that there was a word about power. And Daniel reminded Belshazzar that King Nebuchadnezzar, his power came from God. And secondly, there was a word about pride. And Daniel reminded the king that Nebuchadnezzar lost his kingdom because of pride. 
And thirdly, there was a word about punishment. King Nebuchadnezzar was punished until he came to realize that the most high God rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomever he chooses. And after Daniel shared those points with Belshazzar, he began to apply the text. And he told him, he says, you have not humbled yourself, although you knew all of this. He says, King Belshazzar, you knew about the power. You knew about the pride and you knew about the punishment. But you have lost all sense of remembrance and reality, restraint, and respect. And when we forget these things, we become blind to the fact that our problems are not primarily political, economical, or social. The decline of any nation stems from spiritual factors. And everything else is merely symptomatic. But as we look at this banquet hall, and Daniel standing in the mix thereof. It's silence. And Daniel reveals the handwriting on the wall. Mene, mene, tekel, apostrin. And these words reveal three elements involved in a sinner's destruction. Simply, the words were numbered weighed and separated. In other words, Daniel was saying, your days are numbered. Judgment is coming and you will be separated from God for eternity. And so the ballroom is now a scene of fright and terror. Hearing these words that have been spoken. But there was one person who stood peacefully. He wasn't scared. He wasn't concerned about his destiny. Because he knew the one who had written on the wall. My brothers and sisters, this fifth chapter of Daniel concludes with these words. That very night, Belshazzar was slain and Darius the Mede received the kingdom. That very night, while Babylon had partied with no sense of restraint or remembrance, the armies of the Medes and the Persians diverted the Euphrates River into a swampland, and they marched right into the city through the dry riverbed that ran under the city wall and took the city. That lets us know today that God's judgment is certain. And there is not a high wall that is high enough nor thick enough to prevent a person or a nation from falling when God writes upon the wall. Who knows how close we might be to our number being called. Who knows how close we might be to facing God's judgment. 
one thing we can know for sure is which side we will be on when he comes and begins to separate the sheep from the goats. Very few nations have had a history like America. And for over 200 years, we have been a shining light to the world around us. We've been a launch pad to take the gospel literally to the very ends of the earth. We have often heard people say, God is our only hope. But I wonder if God might not be our biggest threat. What is it about America that offers us the exemption that neither Babylon nor Israel were given? I'm here to let you know that there's a last night for every nation for every individual. And in light of eternity, what is the kingdom of Babylon or any other nation compared to the kingdom that is forfeited by men, women, boys, and girls without Christ? Truly, our days are numbered. And we need a sense of urgency and exchanging our own righteousness for the righteousness Jesus Christ offers through salvation. On this Memorial Day, as we remember those who gave so much for our freedom and the things that we enjoy today, I pray that we will also be reminded that the Most High God still rules over the affairs of men. And we need to get back to humbling ourselves before him. Yes, now President Joe Biden had it correct. There is a battle for the soul of our nation. But it's not political. It's spiritual. And my brothers and sisters, one of these old days, the writing is going to be on the wall. We're starting to see signs. We're sensing the various displeasures. We're seeing things taking place within our nation that we thought would never occur. But I'm here to let you know, the word of God says, he who exalts himself, the Lord will humble. And right now, right now, in our day, in our time, we need to humble ourselves before him, remembering the things that he has done. See the reality that we are facing, put in place the restraints that we need to have to keep us on God's side and to regain the respect that we have one for the other. If we fail to do those things, we too can become just like Babylon. And over in the book of Revelation, 
clearly the cry has gone out. The great Babylon has fallen. Don't let that be us. And if by chance it is us, make sure that you're on the Lord's side when it does. For he will keep you, he will protect you, and he will give you the promises that he has offered unto you. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, Lord, we recognize the battlefields that keep rising up each and every day around our lives. So many things, oh Lord, that we thought by now we would have overcome, would have done away with. But yet still, God, we are still fighting still battling. But we put our faith and our trust in you. And we ask, oh God, that you would help us to always remember from whence we've come. And not only from whence we've come, oh God, but how we got to where we are today. And as we see our present reality, as bleak as it may be, may we still give you the glory, honor, and praise. As we restrain ourselves not to be conformed, but instead to have our minds transformed by the renewing of our spirit. Oh God, we pray thy presence upon us. Forgive us of our sins. Encourage us in our walk. And let your grace and your mercy be upon us. This is my prayer. In the name of Jesus. And we close in a special consideration. For those, oh God, who have been parts of our families, who have made the ultimate sacrifice for this nation by the laying down of their life on the battlefields around the world, we remember them today. But God, we remember even the greatest battlefield. It was on a hill called Calvary, where there you battled the forces of darkness and evil, and you were victorious. Help us, O oh Lord, to remember, to respect, to reverence that day as we continue to live our lives in Jesus Christ. This we do ask and pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much for being with us on today. We pray that the rest of your holiday weekend will be blessed. You might not be able to do so today, but on tomorrow you can get out and hopefully enjoy some of the sunshine and the warmth. <clears throat> we invite you to visit our website. We've updated our letter. We know that the county, our region now have uplifted many of the restrictions that we are under. And there's a question that many are asking, when are we going to be able to make it back to the house of God? We're trying to address that in the letter on the website a letter from the pastor, so I invite you to stop by there and read it. And as always, continue to support our ministry, our church, as we seek to continue to give the world the word of God, because it is the word of God that will be our aid and our shield in the times of trouble. But it will also be our comfort 
and our guide in the times of distress. Brothers and sisters, thank you. God bless you. May heaven smile richly upon you. Until we meet again, stay safe, stay tuned, and stay connected. God be with you until we meet again.